Hi, this is our third video for this problem. We're gonna continue applying Gauss's law to find the electric field. In the first video, we find, found uh, the electric field for a non-conducting spherical shell. We found the electric field inside the cavity at point A. We found it to be zero. Second video we had, we moved to point B and we found the electric field inside the non-conducting material and now in, we're gonna move all the way to point C which will be outside of it so we're gonna start by applying and drawing our Gaussian surface which will be a nice symmetric sphere around our material and we're gonna start by writing Gauss's formula. And by the way, in these three problems, and he here as well, our density varies, it changes, it's not constant inside the material. And we had a formula given for it. I'm gonna write it over here, just so you can have it handy. Rho equals rho naught times R over big R and I believe it was 2 yes big R 2 this is our varying charge density so Gauss's formula Gauss's law formula integral of E times dA equals Q enclosed, charge enclosed over E naught, the permittivity of space. Again, our uh, shape is a nice sphere, so we know how to find the area for that. E we're gonna move in front of the integral since it's constant. E integral dA equals Q enclosed over E naught. Here's integral of our area, which will be the surface area of a sphere. E times 4 pi r squared. And this r is for our Gaussian surface, which we will call small r and an index c for our point c. So We'll put a little c here to the square. Q enclosed over E naught. And for now, we're going to leave it as is. And we're going to come here and we're going to do our side work. Again, we're going to start with our charge density formula, which is rho equals Q over V. We're going to solve for Q, rho times V. Now, we're going to take derivative of both sides with respect to V. So D with respect to V of Q and derivative with respect to V of rho V. And from here we can dQ over dV equals, our rho is constant, so we can move it in front of our derivative, and the derivative of V with respect to V is just 1. So, rho times 1, and we have dQ equals rho dV. Now, let's work on finding a better representation for dV. Our surface, a volume of a sphere, so... We're going to start with that. V equals 4 third pi r cubed. We're going to take a derivative of both sides with respect to r. So d, dr of v, d, dr of this whole thing. 4 third pi r cubed dv over dr and we can uh, 4 third pi 
is a constant, so we can move it in front of our derivative or the pi, and the derivative of r cubed will be 3 times r to the second, the 3 goes away, so we're going to have dv equals 4 pi r square dr. Now, we have a nice replacement for our dv, and for our row, we have our formula given. Now we're going to come to our dq and plug these two in. We're going to bring this, plug it in, we're going to bring this and plug it in. So dq equals rho naught times r over r2 times 4 pi r squared dr. Now we're gonna make this look a little bit better. And as we see in our or in main formula that we are working for, we have q. Here we have dq. So therefore we're gonna have a, we're gonna take an integral of both sides of this equation. And that way an integral of a derivative just cancel each other. So all we're gonna have is q, what we're gonna be needing. And equals, we'll find the limits in a minute. And let's make this one look a little bit more presentable. So rho naught for pi, we're gonna put r and r to the square together, cubed over big R2, and we have our dr. Now, let's look at what we have rho naught, 4, pi, and the big R2, these are all constants. So we're going to be able to move them in front of the integral. Rho naught, 4, pi over R2, integral. All we have left is inside is R cubed, which will be a pretty easy integral. At first it might look very scary, but all this moves out and all we have is r cubed. Now let's figure out our limits of integration. So where are we integrating? We are, this is our center and we are integrating from, or as we come, our material starts at r1 and it ends at r2. And there's nothing else from r2 to C, our point c, wherever that may be. So, we're going to integrate where our material is, for, from R1 to R2. There you go, that's going to be our integral. Now we're going to solve in the front rho naught 4 pi over big R2. That doesn't change. Integral of R cubed is R to the fourth divided by 4. And our limits of integration are 1, 2, or 2. Now, we're going to have our final form for our Q, which will be our Q enclosed, that we're going to plug into our Gaussian surface. I mean, formula, Gaussian surface formula. So, Q, the front stays. Again, our 4 we can simplify out rho naught pi r2 and r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. And this is our q that we're going to come and bring all the way here and plug it in for our Gauss's law formula. So, E, 4 pi r c squared, we don't touch this side, we come here, and on the bottom we have the permittivity, E naught, and we're going to put on top of it this. So, rho naught pi r 2 
r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. There you go. Now we're gonna simplify it down and make it look prettier and solve for e. e equals rho naught pi r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. On the bottom we're gonna have 4 pi rc squared times big R2 e naught. Our pi simplifies out and we arrive to our final shape for it. And if you can, it's always beneficial to group up all the constants and kind of separate out what's your variable. In all this mess over here, the only thing that's actually a variable is our RC. And that's down here. Everything else is a constant. So we're gonna write it in a way that we group them. So rho naught r2 fourth minus r1 fourth divided by 4 r2 e naught and then simply times 1 over rc2. You can write this down here, same thing, but in case you wanna graph it or have a visual how this would look like you could see that this is pretty much the same thing as 1 over x squared so this is our final formula for our e e field outside the spherical non-conducting shell thank you